What's up, everyone? Mike here. So I am hanging out outside the mushroom farm, and I just recently built this mushroom sterilization system. Now, I've put together many uh, sterilization systems similar to this one, like I put together here on other farms in the past, and these things work great. You can cook about 1,000 pounds of substrate in just one shot with these things. So I'm going to kind of talk to you guys today how I set this thing up, how it works, and uh, all that good stuff. Now, I haven't done a cook-in here yet, so um, we're going to do our first sterilization cycle together here on this channel. And um, I just want to say, if you haven't subscribed to this channel already, make sure you click that subscribe button right now so you get more mushroom and farming videos like this in the future. Uh, drop this video a like, and let's get on to checking out this sterilization system I made. All right, everyone, so you can see I got this PEX line running out the back of my building there into this trough. Now, that rock is just there for uh, temporary purposes, but uh, I will put uh, blocks on top of that as this thing is running normally. And you can see we got the mountains right there in the background. This is a good place to be making substrate blocks. And I want to say I'm going to add a T on the end of that pipe there, that three-quarter inch PEX pipe. And uh, what that will do is it'll basically distribute that steam a little more evenly throughout the trough there. I just didn't have any more PEX fittings with me here today, so I decided just to leave it as is. And I'll make the video and show you guys, and I'll come back later and add that in. Now on the inside, I have two 30 amp breakers powering this system. And there are two dedicated circuits that run back to a boiler. I've got an eight gauge wire that basically powers each hot water element in this boiler. There are two 240 volt hot water heater elements in this boiler right now that I used to create this boil. And you can see it is a rolling boil. It's looking good in there. It makes a whole lot of steam like that. Now I want to show you guys the lid I made. Basically I've got a lid right here. I uh, put a couple um, shut offs on there, three quarter inch pecs coming out. I messed up one of the fittings so I had the JB weld it into the lid, but you can see it worked out fine. And uh, there's my two hot water heater elements in the bottom right there before I brought it up to a boil. And then here she is, rolling boil again. Just wanted to show you guys. And uh, like I said, I steam these blocks for 24 to 36 hours. And um, we're going to be testing how much water is being consumed during this full 36 hour cook because I'm not running a float valve in this setup. All right, everyone, so I decided to come in to finish the rest of the video and just talk to you guys uh, about how I got that boiler set up inside. Now, I'm going to explain to you how I've got it set up all the way from the front of my building, from the circuit breaker box that comes in, and the wires that run all the way through to the heater elements back in my boiler. Okay, so we're going to go from the circuit breaker box all the way back from the boiler, and I'm just going to explain what's going on. So, starting in the circuit breaker box, okay, I have two circuit breakers that are um, 30 amp breakers. All right, now I just want to say, um, hire an electrician if you don't know what you're doing, all right, to set your system up, get a, get like a certified electrician and whatnot. But I got two 30 amp breakers in there. I've got a dedicated circuit for each um, hot water heater element. So there's two breakers, eight gauge wire running all the way back from the breaker to um, each 240 volt hot water heater element. Now, each element is 4,500 watts, 240 volts. I use both of them to start the cook and kind of like initiate that boil. Once you're up to a rolling boil, I, you can flip off one of the breakers, okay? And you only need one of them then to um, maintain that boil then to finish off your cook. Now, I just want to kind of talk about this system a little bit because there's some pros to it. And, um, and I don't really see a con at all, to tell you the truth. This is my favorite way to set these things up. I did do something a little new on this barrel that I haven't previously done. I've even made it simpler, all right? Now, um, I'm gonna talk to you guys about that, kind of what I've done there uh, compared to previous setups that I've had. Now, previous setups that I've done like this, I've actually used three different elements, um, or three elements total in a barrel before. So I've had three 4,500 um, 4, watt hot water heat elements in one. And um, this one has two. Only really need two from uh, the experience that I've had, though. Three could really, really put some steam off the boil, let me tell you. Um, now, I want to say, when I do a cook with a system like this, I will cook these blocks 24 to 36 hours. I pretty much always go 36 hours. You can actually overdo it, okay? Um, the blocks get a little funny, actually, if you overcook them. Uh, you don't want to undercook them, obviously, because you can get um, contamination then, so there's a sweet spot. Uh, pretty much like when you have the core temp, okay, of the blocks at around 200 degrees uh, for about like eight hours. That's that's uh, pr that'll pretty much get everything in there sterile. But 
I never actually have any temperature probes, never have done it, never have needed it with uh, nearly a decade of experience. Okay, I've always just kind of plugged it in and uh, let it run for a designated amount of time. That's all you need to do, man. So don't overcomplicate this, all right? Just, um, now on a large trough like this, I'm sterilizing, like I said, about a thousand pounds at a time. That's what's gonna require a 36 hour cook. Now I wanna kind of talk about like the bubble barrels and stuff, cause some guys run these bubble barrels. Uh, just the 55 gallon drum then, and they actually load the box inside that drum. There's a false bottom. There's an element and a float valve at the bottom of there, okay? Now, here's the thing. On those bubble barrels, a lot of guys, it happens pretty much everyone that owns one, those, uh, that float valve can stick, all right? Now, if that float valve sticks, what will happen is your, your barrel will begin to flood, okay? So all of your blocks then will get flooded. I just wanna say on a setup like this, where you have a designated boiler and then a separate trough, that can never happen, okay? You will never be able to flood your blocks. And um, it's just the way I've got this set up. Now, one thing I like to do with the trough outside, I do like to drill holes, and I haven't done this yet, but I like to drill holes in the bottom of that trough just to let the condensate drip out. And um, you'll never have even the, the blocks on the bottom of your trough, okay? They will never um, have a hydration issue. They won't be overhydrated or anything like that. Everything always turns out perfect. So. This is the ideal setup, I'd say, for most mushroom farms. You wanna do a boiler and then pump that steam out to a trough, okay? Um, this is like, a, I'm pretty sure this is what Mossy Creek uses, all right? Now, um, I wanna say guys like uh, Eric Myers, okay? Eric Myers is a fan of the Bubba's Barrels, and recently he has actually developed a, um, I think he's got like a water level sensor and uh, probably a relay and a solenoid to shut off the water or something like that. Uh, if the, the bubbles barrel begins to flood. Now, I just want to talk about that a little bit. I think it's cool, you know, that he's invented a little system like that. But I do just want to say, um, from like a farmer's perspective, and I actually used to be a mechanic and um, an auto mechanic. And as an auto mechanic, and I, I've done other mechanics too, but we would always actually make fun of engineers that did silly things or like put in something that was unnecessary. And I just want to say something like that, I just believe is definitely like, the prime example of like an unnecessary part, okay? Because the way I've set this barrel up here, I have no float valve, right? Basically, I've got it set up where I just fill it up with a bunch of water, we bring it up to a boil, we let it cook for the designated amount of time, and then I'm gonna shut it off, okay? There's no valve to um, flood the system or anything like that, okay? We just got the right amount of water in there, and then that'll be it. Now. I've done setups like this before. Um, it's called like an easy bake barrel, where you put like one element in the bottom, put a false bottom in it, and um, fill it up like a Bubba's barrel. So that's like even just like a Bubba's barrel, just with no float valve. And I just want to say, I've never done a barrel this large without a float valve, so I'm timing. I'm actually going to uh, let you guys know, I'll give you guys an update, how much water I boil off basically every 12 hours. So I've got it up to a full boil right now. I'm going to go back and I will check it in um, 12 hours here, okay, and I'll see how much that water's gone down. I'll check it in 24 and I'll check it in 36. And I'll let you guys know if I've had to add water to this barrel at all or not. And um, if I have not had to add any water, and I don't think I will. I think this thing is going to run absolutely perfectly. Um, this is going to be like an example of the best part is no part, okay? so. Uh, let's get the job done as minimalistically as we can and get the best results. And um, I just want to say too, this is, I used to even build race cars uh, years ago too. We, I would treat things uh, very similar to that where I would keep the parts minimalistic because really you're just trying to make that sucker run hard, man. And a lot of times the more bells and whistles you have on a system or something like that, it can create more fail points and um, just cause more problems, okay? so. Um, yeah, if you're ever setting one of these things up, I mean, it's your choice how you want to do it, but I prefer the most simplistic method, and plus it'll save you money, you know, uh, less parts to break. So I prefer simple if, uh, if, if it can be done like that. And like I said, I will keep you guys updated on how much water this thing is consuming, but I think, I think it's going to be perfect. One more thing I wanted to add as I was editing this, um, I wanted to talk about another boiler that I had previously set up that, di that I did put a fault valve in. So I had a system that I had set up with a boiler and a trough just like this that I did use a fault valve in. And uh, I want to talk about that with you guys a little bit because you can totally do that and you still won't float your blocks even if your valve sticks, okay? Um, so if you do want to put a fault valve in one of these things, 
basically, um, I just want to say I had my last one in my in a garage. So if it did stick for whatever reason, that barrel flooded, I didn't have any problems like in my house or inside of the farm or anything. Here where I have my boiler set up, I actually do have a drain in that room. So even if I would have a flood, we should technically be okay. But I don't really want to risk it, especially if it's unnecessary. So um, you can put one. You can totally put a float valve in one of these barrels if you'd like. But like I said, I'm running this one no float valve, just hot water heater elements, and um, that's it. So I'll keep you guys updated, let you know how much water it consumes, but I think we're gonna be ready to rock. Um, I wanna say too, if you guys have any questions kind of on what I've done here, um, put it in the comment section below and I'll be sure to address that. Drop this video a like, man. Hopefully y'all found this uh, helpful and informative. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, make sure you click that subscribe button right now so you get more um, mushroom and farming videos like this. But that's all I got for you on this one, and I will catch you guys on the next one.